Oh. We lost it again. Oh, con con contrast. Oh, expressive photography. Ah, oh. oh, the real thirds. Oh. Oh. Ah, oh, jeez, oh, baby. I just had this terrible dream. I was going to have to go and run a workshop. Thanks to Thomas Heaton, I'm having haggis and black pudding loaded fries for lunch. Yeah, you wait till you see what I've got coming. <laughs> and I thought I was overdoing it. <laughs> And it turned out it wasn't a dream. I had to go and run a workshop. Welcome to uh, all you expressive photographers there. I'm Alistair Ben. Uh, as you can see, I, I had a ton of fun when I was away. Uh, it was the first workshop I had ran since March 2020 because of the whole COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and we just had an amazing time. It turned out it was a private workshop. It was just one client uh, who had done a mentorship with me uh, in the spring. And he came up to Scotland and we had 10 days together, but also we were hanging out with my really good friends, um, Adam Gibbs and Thomas Heaton, um, and we just had a blast. It was pouring with rain most of the time and gales, but we had an incredibly great time. And what I came to realize was, is that my life had got very serious. I've been running this channel for a couple of years now and an awful lot of what I do and what I talk about, it just feels so serious the whole time. And I just spent my entire time laughing and goofing around with my friends and goofing around with the client and, and helping him to see the world through his own eyes, but a different pair of eyes. And what I've decided is to change the whole focus of the Expressive Photography channel here. And what Expressive Photography is, Expressive Photography is fun. It fills me with joy. It makes me laugh. It makes me smile. It allows me to be me rather than trying to be somebody else. So what I want to do over the next few weeks is deliver something very, very different from you. So we're going to give you an introduction today. I'm going to take you through the raw files or some of the raw files that we made on the first half of the workshop when we we're on the Outer Hebrides. And then Wednesday next week, I'm going to sit down with you and we'll do some processing. We're going to look at some of these images and talk about their, the, why I like them and how we can process them to, to have fun with ourselves and to express ourselves and to make beautiful photographs. Because that's really why we're doing this. Expressive photography really is about making aesthetics that we love and that we're passionate about. And that's what I want to help you do. So what we'll do is we'll dive straight into some of the raw files and you'll see from the video clips that we'll be uh, putting in with them, uh, the kind of conditions that were there at the time, but we won't be focusing on the, the, the development of those photographs today. Um, if you enjoy the concept of becoming an expressive photographer and you want to become more of an expressive photographer, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button. It really helps the channel and it's really gonna help you to get the content in front of you. But for now, let's have a look at some images. So I think the total number of photographs um, in the entire trip was 481. So that's not a huge number of photographs in a 10 day period. It's only 30 or 40 a day. I was also shooting with my Hasselblad uh, 501cm, but mostly I was shooting with my, with my Nikon D850 purely because the weather was quite appalling. 
every photograph that I made was a little moment of just something I noticed. And I, the big question before this workshop started was, can I still make photographs? It had been so long since I've been creative or focused on my own creativity, I guess. It had been so long since I'd really been out with a camera and I'd got very serious and having to run this channel and having to sell ebooks to make a living and not having any other income from our workshops, it was a very stressful period of my life. And I got so heavily focused on the serious aspect of making a living that I forgot how to, how to enjoy myself. And what I discovered being away was I just love making photographs. I love noticing things that bring me joy or noticing things that make me uh, inquisitive or exciting or energizing. Now, this these shots were just taken on the way up on the road, you know, so these are literally just beside the road uh, on the west of Scotland here. So obviously we had a lot of autumn color on the mainland, um, but as we moved out to the, the Western Isles there, things got very, very barren. Now, this is one that did get quickly worked because I think I put it on social media while I was away. But when we first arrived at this beach, there was me, the client and Adam Gibbs. We just arrived at this location. And the thing with this lo this area is it just seems so vast. You've got blank sandy beaches. You've got rocky shorelines. You've got, you know, distant mountains. We didn't have a lot of great light. It was very overcast an awful lot of the time. But what I was talking to the client about was seeing what is there and how those elements relate to each other and can be kind of put together. It's almost like constructing relationships from a very, very big complex picture. So what we'll do is during the week, we'll come to some of these photographs and look at them in a much more critical and analytical way and dive deeper into the sort of how to see creatively and how to make that jump between seeing something that's interesting to organizing the space into something that's perhaps a bit more coherent. Uh, you can see there's a few compositions uh, in this place, uh, just using these beautiful uh, rocks and some of these colored rocks. These are raw files, of course, uh, so they are, and because they're in Lightroom, they've been stripped of any presets. So these are just pure raw files, so they, they can look a little lackluster. Um, even simple things like this, I was fascinated by the way this, this hillside was lit up. And I will just very, very quickly just show the impact of if we change the luminosity here to allow that to shine more. And we can do that really quite, quite aggressively to produce that contrast and then warm it up a fraction. You can see how much contrast is there, but it's that beautiful diagonal that just jumped out at me. Um, and this can even work in black and white and using uh, a colored filter. So say something like an, a yellow filter will really make that quite a pronounced thing as well. So there's all sorts of ways of working this to make it more expressive, I suppose. But ultimately, it's the noticing of the things that was important. Um, we had very, very ominous weather an awful lot of the time. It was weather that was very conducive to uh, finding details in the landscape, the way the waves were interacting with the coastline. Uh, so I was using my Nikon 150 to 600 uh, quite often with my Nissi magnetic filters on them to, to sort of manipulate the shutter speed. This is something else we're going to come back to is again, the and expressive photography is really about understanding how our equipment can help us to be expressive, to, to manipulate time, to understand how waves are interacting with our subjects and how we can change the shutter speed to affect that. But the main thing for me the whole time I was away was I was just so happy to be there. You know, I was in the landscape, I was hanging out with my friends. Uh, Adam was making his photographs and maybe making some vlogs. So you'll be seeing some of his stuff that will be coming very shortly. Tom Heaton was running around like a maniac making his photographs and his videos. And the client and I were spending a lot of time just talking and looking at the landscape and dissecting the landscape. And for him, it was 
an epiphany to see luminosity, contrast, color, atmosphere, and geometry, and how they affect your emotions. So this is the serious bit of expressive photography, is this kind of mental concept of it being more than just making photographs. But at the end of the day, we're just out there in the landscape, engaging and feeling the landscape. Uh, so yeah, there was lots of these sorts of, this was a very nice evening we had, one very rare evening with blue skies. Again, this is a raw file, so it looks a bit plain. We'll come back to these on Wednesday, have a look at see what we can do to make them a bit more impactful and a little bit more expressive. Uh, this was probably the best light that we had in the entire time we were away. This is a very famous place on the west coast of uh, the Isle of Lewis. Beautiful place, uh, wild though, really raging storms, winds and so forth. Just a, an incredible experience to be there. And this is the beauty of photography. It's about gathering experiences and our photographs are somehow... We make them when we're passionate, we make them when we're engaged, we make them when we're excited uh, or introspective and thoughtful. The, the list of circumstances that can allow you to make photographs is huge. Um, we don't have to be inspired, we don't have to be happy. We can be quiet and thoughtful and still make very, very meaningful photographs. Every aspect of your life is or can be creative, it can be a creative catalyst. And that's why I want you to become expressive photographers because it is so inclusive. We don't have to worry about bad light, good light, poor light, exciting light, warm light, cool light. It can be any type of light. Experiences in the landscape are what makes us alive. You know, being out there and noticing the way the waves are interacting with the jagged coastline, all of these things are validating experiences. If I'm sitting there thinking about how poor the light is, I'm not really there. I'm wishing I was somewhere else, maybe in that location, but at a different time. When as this was the most important moment of my life right then was being there, you know, what else am I gonna do? I can't just walk away and say, well, that was rubbish. So I think expressive photography is about taking ownership of being there, taking ownership of accepting it for what it is, and this is why the big question of can I still make photographs? Yes, I can. You know, I, I can make photographs anywhere in the world in any light condition because I don't judge it. I don't evaluate it. I don't try and make it something that it isn't. I'm happy for it just to be what it is. And of course, you know, you do get these moments, you know, where it's just beautiful and serene. A savage storm can be made to feel calm and ethereal and again with a raw file they're a bit flat and maybe lack a bit of contrast but at the end of the day it's that arrangement of feel that I've talked about in previous videos that arrangement of feel allows us to engage with the landscape and it allows us to really be there and I think if we're going to be photographers being in the landscape is the most precious thing that we have. The time in front of the computer is important. The time preparing for trips is important. But it's actually being there is the most important thing. And I think that's what I got out of this trip the most, was just being there with my friends, hanging out, having a laugh, goofing around, being stupid, um, telling jokes, uh, you know, having nice food, eating big sticky desserts with lots of ice cream and custard just being there and having a good time and it took years off me it suddenly made me realize that the life I have now is so fortunate the time I have to spend talking to you is so important so please 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 hit that like button and hit the subscribe button we want to grow this channel into a really significant force to get more people into expressive photography while we're talking about expressive photography I would like to just plug my own products for a little while. And since it's the Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend, I thought I would extend uh, a discount code to you guys of 25% off everything in our store. The number of products that we have now is growing quite significantly, um, but the ones I would like to catch uh, your attention to are the ones that cover the five triggers. The five triggers of engagement, the very core of expressive photography and how we engage with the landscape and how we feel the landscape. 
So the books are Luminosity and Contrast, The Colour of Meaning, and then the latest one is Creativity Superpowers Part 1. Those three books are an absolute foundation course that will change the rest of your life. Everyone who's ever bought them and who've subsequently come on workshops or spent time talking to me online have all said that they're the, the most important books they've ever read about photography. So please, please, if you have not already checked out those three books, please do so. There's a 25% discount code for the, this weekend. I'll let that run for the entire week. So until next Sunday, this code will be valid. So please, please, please click on the link below. Go and check out the store, check out those books, grab your 25% discount while you can, and I can guarantee they will change your life. How we see the world, how we see ourselves in the world, and the passion that we have for creativity is all wrapped up in those three books. So please do yourself a favour, invest in your future, invest in your photography, and become an expressive photographer, and I can pretty much guarantee it will change your life and make you a much happier and fulfilling person. Listen to Uncle Ben. Um, back to the few images. The, there's so many of these moments that I really, I really like these photographs and I'm itching to start processing them. And I, I've intentionally left it. Um, my wife uh, was away in Norway for nearly three weeks and we've been apart for quite a long time. I was there and then I was down in the south of England visiting my son for, for a long weekend. And I've intentionally left the photographs to just be um, because I just want to allow myself to settle back into being home, dealing with quite a lot of admin and catching up on a few other things. Next week is the time set aside now for me to start working on these. So I can't wait to get my fingers into these. So please join me on uh, Wednesday coming and I'll look at some of these photographs. We'll process them live. So, you know, we'll do it together. We're going to look at them and what we'll do is we'll do a, like a two, three, four, five minute edit to kind of set the scene to really capture the feel that we're trying to capture uh, and to try and express the, the general feeling and mood that we're trying to capture. I'll also talk about each composition in quite a lot of detail in terms of the arrangement and why I've composed it that way. We'll look at the bigger scene from other video to see what we were looking at. So we're going to be doing a bit of a deep dive. So I might only do one photograph on Wednesday and then next Sunday we'll probably do another one or two photos as well. So please stay tuned to the Expressive Photography channel. If you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button uh, so that you get notifications. Uh, that bell notification button will do you some favours and obviously a thumbs up. If you have anything to say in the comments, jump in. I love reading what you have to say about your expressive photography, your thoughts about expressive photography, your thoughts about anything to do with photography. And what we're going to be doing over the coming months is looking at your relationship with the landscape, the gear that we use, how to use our gear creatively, specific techniques that affect the aesthetics and the creativity in the, in the natural landscape how to deal with bad light, flat light, poor light, great light, everything to do with your time in the landscape, how to make you the best photographer that you can possibly be is what we're going to be focusing on on the Expressive Photography channel. Whew. I feel somewhat exhausted, but also energized and kind of excited. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, we'll be digging into quite a few of these photographs over the coming weeks. Uh, and I look forward to sharing those with you. Uh, but yeah, for now, thank you very much for watching Expressive Photography. I'm Alistair Ben, and uh, yeah, maybe now's your time to become the expressive photographer who you know you are deep inside and you just haven't found that perfect way yet. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.